Now, if some of you have been following me on Twitter, you'll probably know that my Model X went in for a new windshield. Tesla determined that it developed a stress crack, so thank you, Tesla, for doing that under warranty, no less. So, uh, yeah, those guys are really great. But as usual, they give me a loaner. So today, as I like to do, typically when I get a loaner, is I like to do a little impromptu review. So uh, let's take a look and see what we're gonna look at today. So here is the loaner that they gave me. It's not a Tesla. Uh, Toronto seems to run out of uh, Teslas quite often, so they give us these gas cars. In this case, it's a Mercedes CLA 250 4Matic. So we're gonna take a look at this thing. One of the things that bothers me the most though, and one of the reasons I want to do this particular review, is online there is constant harping about Tesla's fit and finish on their cars. You know, all oh, the Germans do it so much better, and Tesla's garbage. So you know what? Let's take a look at this bastion of German quality to see how it really stacks up. So here's the uh, gas cover. It's plastic. I can see here that the gaps on the edges are not 100% even. And here's one of the uh, door gaps. Yeah, and that one's not so bad. Looking down here, oh, look at this. Trim doesn't line up, uh-huh. Yep, that's not cool. Let's take a look around the other side here. Here's the trunk. Yeah, that's not 100% flush. That's not so bad there. Take a look around here. Yeah, definitely the gap here is wider on this side than the other side, so there's definitely another fail. Let's take a look here. Yeah, see there's a flaw there. This trim piece doesn't line up. Mm, oh yeah, look at that. Chrome trim doesn't line up, another fail. Yeah, so far so good. All right, let's take a look at the inside of the car. Oh, what's this? Oh, we got a big gap down in here. This is a brand new car, by the way. Take a look on this side. Oh yeah, big time. All right, so that wasn't fitted properly right from the factory, as you can see. So that's definitely not cool. By the way, this is a totally frameless window. And just like in Tesla fashion, you're gonna see it here go up and go up inside. There you go. So again, these cars would probably suffer in the cold as well. There you go. Let's uh, move forward here a little bit. Yeah, so this is pretty wide in here and it narrows down at the bottom. That's not perfect. Okay. Oh, big wide gap on here in the front. Yeah, oh, that's not flush. Well, as you can see from the exterior, this car is not any better than any of the other cars. Look, the whole point of this video it's just to show you that there is no such thing as a perfect car. I don't care what the make and manufacturer, what country it's made in. There is no such thing as a perfect car. So, you know what? If somebody tells you that Tesla's quality is not good, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. All right, let's go on the inside and take a look at this puppy. Woo! Let it sink in, folks. Regale in the splendor of... Button overload, holy mackerel, look at the bling in this thing. Yeah, this is part of the problem. Modern cars, um, specifically a lot of these luxury brands, is that the sheer amount of the separate plastic and bits and visual goo gaws, it's just a visual cacophony of stuff inside the car to make it look premium, but you know, there's something to be said for simplicity. All right, here's the key fob, by the way, it's the typical Mercedes thing and you got to put it in the old slot. It's cold outside so I'm going to turn this thing on. Here we go. Maybe we can get some heat happening. All right. Yeah, yeah, shut up. Okay, cool. Um, right, let's take a little visual tour. Well, one of the first things you'll notice, of course, the switch gear is the same thing as a Tesla Model S or Model X, which is great. Um, specifically the window controls here, they're all the same on all those cars. Uh, again, the parts bin that Tesla uses is largely the same as what Mercedes does. They're probably made by Bosch. And the other thing that really threw me is, look, the gear shifter. Um, when I first got in the car, I was looking for the typical, you know, gear shifter over here. Didn't happen until I spotted the gear shifter and it's literally the same thing as a Model S. You, you know, as you're parking, you got drive and reverse and neutral. 
So that's the first time I've ever seen it on a car like this. Then again, I don't drive Mercedes, so you know, what do I know? I used to own one, not a great experience. Anyway, so you can see over here, the switch gear is exactly the same. And even the cruise control stock over here is the same thing as the autopilot stock, minus you don't have any twisty turnies. By the way, when I was driving this thing, even though it has basic cruise control, it has no uh, traffic aware cruise control. This car it sells for about $43,000 Canadian and it has only basic cruise control it doesn't even have anything like autopilot or anything like that so you know for that kind of money i would rather buy a standard range model 3 when it becomes available all right a little bit more of a tour um this i don't get why do manufacturers put seat controls on the door rather than on the seat where they actually belong like i can understand you putting this here if you don't have room but i can put my hand here you know between the seats to get it control so why would you put it up there put it down where it belongs by the way lumbar controls ah guess what they're right on the side of the seat so yeah not cool i mean put the memory buttons there that's that's okay but you know don't put the seat controls there by the way again forty three thousand dollar car uh no electric seats on the passenger side it's all manual speaking of seats um not even real leather this is oh my god it's cold this morning um, this is this MB Tex or whatever it is. Um, Non-adjustable headrest, just like a Tesla. Fairly comfortable, but they're very stiff. This is not nice and supple like the uh, fabric that Tesla's using. It does feel like, yeah, this, okay, so you do get a little bit of an extra control piece. This would be nice to have on a Tesla though. All right, let's take a look at the uh, center console. So there is literally <laughs> very little storage. This is the only storage you get. You get a couple of USB slots and nothing underneath so two little cup holders this does move forward another cup holder there a little spot in here to put bloody hell it's an ashtray wow never seen that before been a long time since i've been an ashtray in a car so that's the center console here's the next thing let's spend a little time this is a common thing on a lot of cars these days they're tending to put these little screens front and center much like uh, you know Model 3. The difference though is that this little guy is not even a touch screen. There's no touching involved. You have to use no less than three different ways to control the three uh, the stuff on the screen. So the first thing you give is this little jog dial here. And I don't know if I can get the thing to come up. Can I get it to, to come up? If I put the car in drive. Wow, interesting. The screens aren't even coming on this morning. That's how cold it is. Anyway, so you got this little jog dial. And you can move the cursor around on the screen to pull up different things. And then they give you the same controls on the steering wheel. And then some of the common controls, of course, are also found on the radio. So you got uh, radio navigation, um, you know, that kind of stuff. And you got a dialer button over here. So it's almost like there's these little fiefdoms inside the car manufacturer that can't, can't seem to decide, you know, you know, how are we going to control this screen? It's like, no, I'm going to put it here. And no, no, we're going to put it here. And the radio guys say, no, no, we're going to put it here. Like, make up your minds. Where are you going to put the thing? There's something to be said for simplicity. All right, let's move on. Uh, let's see here. The HVAC controls. Well, the HVAC controls, by the way, none of the HVAC controls are controllable via the screen. It's all manual. All has to be done down here. The buttons are fairly well laid out. Most of the time, you just kind of put it in auto mode, just crank it up wherever you need it to go. Ooh, that's cold. I'm going to turn that off. It's not warm enough yet. So there's that. Uh, this car does not have a navigation system in it. It keeps complaining you need to put an SD card in there. I guess that's where that goes there. So again, no navigation. I had to use my phone for that. This stuff is all, this is smooth, by the way. It, I don't know what that, it's plastic. Nothing major to look at. Glove compartment. Fairly small, not much bigger than a Model 3s, but that's okay. Rear view mirror, very basic. Uh, it is manual, there's no, it's not dichromic or anything like that, so there's that. Um, no sunroof on this car. It does have a black headliner, which is uh, something I like. But the number one thing, my takeaway from this car, my God, is it ever tiny, the entire of this thing. Like, even the back seats, it's so cramped back there, and I have such a difficult time getting into this car. I would have a really hard time recommending a family buy a car like this because it's just so tiny on the inside. You're much better off with the Model 3 given the interior is so much bigger for a car in this class on account of the flat floor and the minimalism, everything being pushed forward and the seats being uh, you know pushed forward, you get a lot more uh, 
um, leg room and so on and so forth in the car. Um, didn't try any of the voice controls. Uh, like I said, the cruise control is very basic on this car, has no active cruise control or anything like that. This car has um, all wheel drive, it's 208 horsepower. And I found that even in comfort mode, which you can select with this button right here, you can switch between um, sport, comfort, individual, eco, whatever. The comfort mode, uh, really mushy at low speeds. The steering is really, really mushy. It's almost like it has no feedback whatsoever. I didn't like it at all. On the highways, yeah, it's okay. Fairly quiet on the highways, but very anemic engine. Again, ice cars tend to be like that because you got a lot of, you know, t uh, gear lash and, you know, uh, mechanical, you know, connections and so on and so forth. So um, the other thing too, this car has the, you know, the typical common thing with most cars these days in this category where you come to a stop and the engine shuts off. I hate that. Um, as soon as you let off the brake, the engine takes a second and then it starts up, well, not a second, it's like half a second starts up. I would hate to be in a, in a situation in traffic when you're looking in a rear view mirror and you get a car barreling towards you and you're like, oh my God, I gotta get out of the way. And then, you know, the engine's gotta start and then of course you gotta floor it to move out of the way. Anyways, it's a recipe for disaster. I don't like those systems. So I wish they would stop doing that. I guess it's fuel economy, but how much fuel are you actually saving when you're sitting at a stoplight for a couple seconds? Anyway, uh, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, yeah, thanks Tesla for giving me this thing. It's not like they have a choice or anything like that, but I would not buy this car, that's for sure. Um, you know, yeah, it's cheaper than a Model 3, but then again, by the time you add on some features and stuff to make this thing worthwhile, um, you're getting close. I mean, these German cars tend to go up in price very quickly, and um, yeah, it's not electric. <laughs> And uh, the interior space really sucks on this car. It's it's not really good. I wish I could get the screen to come up. I don't know why it's not coming up. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it'll come on when I start driving. Anyway, so that's my little impromptu review of this car. So again, the, the point of this video is not to bash on the car. It's just to put things into perspective. When you're looking at Teslas or you're hearing about people harping on Tesla's quality or features or whatever, you don't know what you're talking about because these German manufacturers are still doing things to the traditional way. They're not simplifying anything. They're not taking anything bold. They're not making any kind of statements. It's just the same old, same old all the time. So there's my little rant. We'll uh, see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. See ya.